thank everyone for coming in today with a special session with Dr. Luca Kostic, one of the most recent merit winners from the last exam. Super proud of your effort. Now, Luca is one of my trainees here from the um, hospital network here in Victoria. And I'm so fortunate to have him here today to talk about how to prepare for the last three months, as well as one of his favorite topics, which is TIVA and TCI. So Luca, over to you. Hey everyone, um, thanks. Thanks, Dan. Um, you, you flatter me a little bit too much. Um, mostly just what I w wanted to give you guys a heads up for is, is a lot of stuff that I, that I wish I, I had sort of known um, leading into it because you, um, I found that it was pretty nicely straight for the first nine months and then the last three months is a bit of a panic. Um, and then just uh, not so much my favorite topic, but a topic that I found people just didn't um, really do very well when I was doing practice vibers with them. Um, and so I thought I'd give everyone a bit of a head start. A quick disclaimer before we get going is there's there's no one way to do this. Um, everyone works differently. Everyone has different learning styles. Uh, all of you are going to have different life circumstances, whether that be kids, you know, relationships, different levels of support. Um, so you really do need to find what works for you and, and find a time commitment that works for you. Um, this is what works for me. Um, and uh, it, it, I probably in you know in retrospect overstudied uh, to an extent which is probably part of the reason I, I ended up with a merit um so don't by any means feel you have to do as much as i did to pass this exam uh, but i would strongly encourage you to not only aim for a pass but aim for a strong pass um, because it is a nice feeling when you're turning up on the day and you're confident that you're absolutely going to pass and, and there's not really a prospect of of sitting it again um, and just quickly before we start, um, you know, it, it's okay to not be okay throughout this year. Um, it was a, a very rough year. Um, you know, I, I did very well uh, and I still had a pretty miserable, horrible uh, year. Um, I, I, I don't really, um, I don't really like studying. I've, I've, <laughs> so uh, that's something I've always, always have, um, have done. Um, Unfortunately, I happy, happen to be good at it. Um, and so it's you know, ne never a fun thing when you're good at something you hate. Uh, I prefer being outdoors, prefer you know, doing, other, doing other life things, probably should have been a tradie in, in retrospect, but uh, here I am. Um, it, it is a, it's a rough year. Uh, it doesn't matter how smart you are. It doesn't matter how little or how much work you put into it. Uh, it occupies a huge amount of your time uh, and, and, and it's not really an easy, easy road. I'm sure a lot of people are already partway along it, uh, are feeling that. Um, you're not alone. You, you know, you've got your study groups. Um, if it is impacting your mental health, there, there are plenty of people to talk to. Uh, I'm probably not the person to give advice on this, but um, you know, um, to just sort of know that everyone going through the exam is, is probably going through a, a similar thing. Uh, if you feel like you're um, going through a tougher time than most, it's probably time to, to reach out and, and speak to people. Um, you know, things that were difficult for me in the year, um, the fear of failure, so that, that's always there. Uh, for me, the, the fear of failure was mostly a, a prospect of having to go through it all again and having to commit the time to it all again. Uh, which is something that I was I was dreading. Uh, so very happy to be done with it. Um, huge impact to social life, to the things that you enjoy doing, and and really to mental health. Like I spent the year or the first nine months were okay, but the last three months really locked in a room studying, um, and, and that gets you pretty down at, at times. Um, you know, it's a, it's a, it really is a, it's a roller coaster of, of stress, bit, bit of bit of depression. Uh, I had a little bit of passive suicidal ideation throughout the year, you know, nothing major, but um, you know, all of that's probably par for the course. Uh, if, if you're starting to get into a, a darker place than that, please do reach out. Um, there, you know, there's lots of, lots of people who are very happy to help and there, and there are lots of ways to, to approach the exam and, and take time off and hospitals can be a bit more supportive than they are. Um, I had a, a pretty major setback at the start of the year. So I had um, ACL surgery in October, um, just as I was starting to study for the exam. And that was a really tough time for me um, because I couldn't do anything that I normally did. And I was just stuck at home studying. Um, so sort of the things you can do to make it a bit of a better year. 
The first nine months of study are more of an acquisition of knowledge. And I don't think you need to flog yourself for these nine months as long as you're covering the content. Um, so try and make those first nine months, try and do something for yourself. At least have a day a week where you can do something for yourself, um, do the things you enjoy, see your friends. The last three months, it becomes harder to do that as you ramp up. So you really want to be running into the last three months in a good mindset, trying to minimize, minimize the, um, the burnout that you've got at that point. And the advice I'd have to everyone is to, to do what I did if you can and have a break um, to make it better. So I went to Hawaii for three weeks in January uh, on holiday. And I think without that break in the middle, that was sort of the six month mark, I, I would have really struggled to make it down the home stretch. So if you've got some annual leave that you haven't teed up, a break in January, Feb, March for a couple of weeks will do you extremely well. The caveat being you need to work hard before that to get ahead a little bit so that you're not coming back behind and more stressed out. Um, so I managed to get a few weeks ahead. Didn't really have to do any work in Hawaii, had a break, um, I came back refreshed and, and really able to, to tackle it again. Um, so if you've got the opportunity to do it, having a couple of weeks, having a nice holiday, you know, spending time with family, friends, whatever it is you want to do, uh, I would suggest trying to do that. Um, I'll send Stan a copy of the slides so you guys have them all, but this was essentially my study plan and how we broke it down. Um, probably in retrospect, would have spent a little bit more time on Gen Farm and a little bit less time on a few other topics, um, but mostly it worked. So that's sort of what the first nine months looks like. It's beautifully structured. Mac 95 sorts it all out for you. You just go through and, um, you know, and stick to a timetable. Um, what I did, so I used the primer document to identify um, the, 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 reference, the sources that I needed um, and, and the texts. I went through those texts and I made notes on, um, on the books. It took me, uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure I think Stan sent out my one note to a few of you, um, to hopefully all of you. It took me about an hour to get through three pages of a textbook um, in, in making those notes, sometimes maybe four pages. Uh, so it's extremely slow, extremely time consuming, but that was the way I learned. You know, if for me, writing stuff down means I remember it. Uh, I did every single learning objective. Um, Mac 95 was very helpful for that. And, and I used the, the resources in the primer document, um, as well as uh, hassling a few of the other guys who'd gone through it uh, beforehand. Um, doing it this way, you know, some weeks, particularly the smaller topics, the smaller physiology topics were a bit of a blur um, and, and I didn't retain a whole lot from them. Um, I, I sort of, um, you know, just prioritized making the notes um and then had a plan to review and come back to them knowing that both those topics were going to be easy to pick up um but as a result sort of three months out from the exam i didn't feel like i knew a whole lot of it that well although i'm sure a lot of people will find themselves in that position uh, so it was really sort of a slog of, of trying to be as efficient as possible to get it done um and it was a very stressful process and at times it felt very unachievable um, and it's sort of like a constant clock ticking over your head to get to get the notes done and get through it all. Um, I don't know if I'd advise to, to do it this way, but it's probably a big contribution as to as to why I did quite well. Um, after I made all those notes, I then went through and did all of the MCQs for that topic on Mac 95, all of the true false questions in the primer document and all of the primary learning outcomes uh, of the day, like questions, true false questions that they have on that website and then added anything that I've missed to my notes. Um, I then would go over the notes and do out the equations and graphs. I slowed down on that towards the end. Mostly did that for resp and cardiovascular. Um, and then at the end of the topic, uh, so you know, the end of a week block or the end of a few learning objectives, I would then sit down and answer the short answer questions, um, kind of formulating an ideal answer, not doing them to time, probably taking 20, 25 minutes uh, to do them using my notes as a, as a reference um, and using the examiner's reports as a reference. So not doing it by memory. Um, and then adding anything I'd missed that was in the SAQs again to the notes. Yeah, like I mentioned before, um, obviously you're gonna get everyone giving you advice and you need to work out what's, what works for you. Um, 
but take a break. It, it really, it really does help. Um, don't aim for the prize. I certainly never aim for the prize. And it probably wasn't until maybe a few weeks before the exam that I was sad to think I'd actually had a chance at it. Uh, once I did the written, uh, I walked out feeling like, okay, I've got a shot at this. And that was probably the worst thing that could have happened because it made it really stressful for the next couple of months preparing for the vibers because it just set that benchmark so much higher. So absolutely don't try and do it um, for the written, um, but don't aim for 51% either because if you miss the mark by a little bit, you're, you're doing it all over again. So really what you should be aiming for is to aim to know the content. Um, and to pass, you really just need the breadth. I think it's overstre overstressed how much detail you need to know to get a pass. When you actually go through the process, uh, um, you, you kind of sit there and go, wow, I really didn't need to do as much of the detail as I did, um, but you do need the, the detail and the depth to get a prize. Um, so that's just the sort of disclaimer. Um, if you understand all of the concepts and you understand them broadly and you understand the key material, um, you know, you, you don't need to know what molecule does this or, or what cytokine or, um, you know, or what all the hormones responsible for gastric emptying, as long as you sort of understand the broad, broad stroke concept. Um, so yeah, try not to confuse the two and don't get carried away in in looking into the depth because uh, I think a lot of people um, get um, get bogged down in the depth especially on certain topics and if you go down that rabbit hole you, you just end up costing yourself time and, and falling behind um, and the last tip is just maximize your efficiency uh, I was very fortunate my partner was extremely supportive um, she you know took up 90% or more of the domestic duties. I bought pre-made meals. Uh, my muscle chef would be the one I recommend taste-wise after trying a few of them. Um, you know, I, I cut back the amount of time I spent in the gym. You know, I used to do five or six sessions and, and I went to, down to three, three or four. Um, I wouldn't go any less than that if you, you know, it's, it's, it's important to have an outlet. So whatever it is, whether it's the gym or, or other things you do, try and keep that up. Um, then you get to the last three months um, and this picture just really highlights how you go from the, you know, the previous one where everything's nicely mapped out and timetabled to thin grey weeks of nothing um, and MAC95 is absolutely very little help here apart from having a list of SAQs. Um, so how I sort of went through it. Um, so I, we started, our, our study group sort of really got together um, for the last three months. We were a bit sporadic for the first nine. Um, part of that, I really just don't study well in, in a group. I always did it on my own. Um, so I just found it was a bit time inefficient for me, um, but it really helped for the last three months. Um, what we started was we essentially started doing the past short answer question papers. Um, doing from 2014 onwards, I think, and try aiming to do two of the papers per week. Um, and then I also had, the, there was a primary exam mentoring scheme uh, and a couple of consultants at the hospitals that I worked at that also gave us SAQs to do as well. For the first, you know, call it first eight, 10, eight to 10 weeks of that of those 13 weeks. Um, I didn't do, I did all the questions to time, but I didn't do them totally blind. So early on, I would read the examiner's report and revise the content for the questions that I was planning to do the day before I did the questions to make sure the material was fresh in my mind and that I could actually structure an answer. And that way it served as revision and, and learning. Um, I started doing about five in a row to time and doing sort of five questions per day. And that would get me my 30 that I needed for the week. And then I would sort of built up over a period of time as my wrist started to tolerate the writing um, and I wasn't mentally dead um, up to eight and then eventually 10. About three or four weeks out, the content is really sitting well for you. 
or it should be sitting well for you. You know, three months out, it's yeah, you haven't done any revision, you haven't gone through the content, you, you're shooting blind, you're looking at stuff that you might have seen seven months ago and, and trying to write an answer for it. It really doesn't work. So you kind of need to revise it. But at three weeks out, you've probably revised it all. Um, and that's when you, you're kind of familiar with it. Uh, and that's when I started doing it all to time without revising the content and then reviewing the examiner's reports and my notes afterwards to sort of see how I did. And I had about four to six papers of doing that. Um, and then in the last couple of weeks, after it was all sort of sorted, um, the last two papers, um, the most recent two, I hadn't looked at any of those questions, left them totally, um, totally free um, and did them as timed full exam runs um, without having covered any of that content um, to, to practice. I didn't get those marked by anyone. I uh, kind of just reviewed them all myself against the examiner's report. But I was also fortunate to have a consultant at each of the hospitals I worked at give, um, give me a full um, timed practice exam that was then marked by a group of consultants. Uh, so I did four full practice runs overall. Um, I'd probably suggest doing at least three to four um, just so that you'll, by the time you get to the exam, it's not like it's, it's not a big deal. Um, you know, doing 15 questions isn't going to going to kill you and, and you know that you can get it done within the time. Um, and I finished you know, the written with sort of five, six minutes in hand um, because I've had that practice of, of structuring and, and doing the answers to time. Um, it, it, the, the whole sort of process, I think, is, is kind of like running a 400 metre race. Um, if you just turn up and run a 400, it's pretty miserable and you die by the end of it and you just feel lactic and, and, and hurting. Um, but if you're training for it regularly, you know, you're running 500s, 600s in training, you, you know, by the time you actually get to the race, uh, running, the, running the 400 metres isn't so bad. You know, it's, it's something that you just do day in, day out. Uh, so you really want the exam to feel like that um, and not be this huge daunting prospect um, having never done the full run. Um, beforehand. Um, Multi-choice questions. Um, so if you've covered all of the content and if you've gone through the learning objectives and if you've read everything um, in, in the, in the text, everything sort of relevant in the texts, you'll know most of the, most of the MCQs. Um, I just did the Anki decks that people had circulating, as well as a few of the other um, MCQ exams that were floating around, ended up being probably about 2,000 MCQs overall uh, over a period of 13 weeks, plus all the MAC 95 ones, which I've done over the course of the year. Um, when I got to the actual exam, probably 140 out of 150 of the questions I very comfortably recognized and knew the answer for, not because I'd seen them before because they're doing very few repeat questions. Um, but because I'd covered all of the learning objectives um, and, and, that, and they just basically pluck them from, from those. A lot of people really struggle with the MCQs. Uh, I think the people that struggle a lot with the MCQs and pass the SAQs are the people who've targeted their study towards the SAQs and used those as the syllabus. Uh, the, the downside there being that the SAQs, you know, maybe only 30 to 40% of the whole content lends itself well to being an SAQ. And there's a whole lot of other stuff that they really assess in the MCQs. Um, and if you haven't covered that, you'll, you'll really struggle with them. Um, if anyone's sort of repeat sitting and, and it's been something that you've, you've struggled with, um, then you'll probably need to put in a bit more work than the 2000 practice MCQs. And, try and dig up some more past questions, some more past um, things that are going around. Um, and also probably just try and cover a few of the more peripheral topics that tend to get asked in MCQs. And then the content. Um, so I spent a lot of time revising content. Um, over the first eight to nine weeks of the last three months, I spent a lot of time going through my OneNote and summarizing it onto cards, uh, which looked like this. 
um, I basically refined the sort of the entire topic, which was very broad, onto one bit of bit of uh, you know was a five sheet um, of cardboard, and in the process, really refined my understanding of, of the topic um, and sort of restructured it. Like, there's a lot of stuff in, in the one note that comes out of the textbook. And then when you start doing practice SAQs, you realize ANSCA likes a different structure um, and the, the way they do that. And so a lot of it really evolved as it, as it went on to the summary cards. Um, and through that process, I think you just develop a, a much deeper understanding. It also meant that when it came to the last three weeks, I had a very finite amount of content that I needed to revise. I basically just went through my summary cards. Um, there's a stack of maybe 400 of them or 350, 400 of them. Um, and I just went through them all, um, spoke them aloud, um, like a bit of an idiot in, in my own home, just walking around and just, you know, just pure repetition until I'd memorized some of the harder details. Um, and also uh, really just had the core concepts dialed down. Took me about 10 days to do that, about 35, 40 cards per day. Um, and by the end of that period, I was absolutely mentally spent and brain dead. And so my advice would be, don't do that before the week. The, 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 don't do that the week before the exam. Um, it is definitely worth taking a, a week's leave before the exam. But if you take the week before the week before, if that makes sense. So two weeks before the exam, take that week off. Do all of your cramming then. You then have an extra week of just tidying up stuff that you might have missed, but at a slower pace while you go back to work and, and sort of just recovering from that. And then you also get the bonus of adding in your exam leave um, on top of the leave you took rather than as part of the leave you took. Um, and I think doing it that week earlier left, definitely left me feeling a lot more confident rather than the week before the exam being a whole stressful process. It was sort of the point where I was like, okay, I really know all of this. I'm very comfortable doing it. Um, at that point, I'd stopped doing SAQs. So two weeks out from the exam, I stopped doing any practice SAQs. Um, started doing maybe a few like one minute or two minute structures, just plans for them just to keep it fresh, um, but didn't do any more full questions to time. Um, and I should have mentioned that for the SAQs. I did very little of the three minute SAQs. I did all of mine as full 10 minute SAQs. Um, and then only in the last two, three weeks did I switch to the you know, two to three minute SAQs. Uh, so again, the summary cards. Um, that last three months was really rough. Um, there's, there's really nothing particularly pleasant about it. Uh, I was putting in 30 plus hours per week, sometimes 35 hours per week. Um, and, and that was largely because I had to get all those SAQs done. And I was doing probably by the end of it, 40 SAQs a week. Um, and then all the content and, and writing out those cards, which took forever. Uh, I had very little time off, very little time for fun, very little of anything. Um, probably not the best way to run into it uh, in, in retrospect, but uh, you know, it, it probably got me where I, where I ended up. Um, I don't think you have to do that extent to pass it. Um, that, that was very much, you know, had me walking into the exam being like, I, I know uh, I'm in a very good spot and I'm very happy that no matter what they ask me, I'll have a good answer for. Um, so that's a nice feeling walking into the exam, but, but it comes at a, at a bit of a cost. Um, and it meant saying no to, a, to, you know, friends all the time, um, you know, missing out on things. Um, I think it was better for me because it was winter. Um, and so there was less to miss out on. Um, and it might be harder to do that sort of extent of studying coming into a summer. Um, it is a little bit of a necessary evil. Um, the last three months really is, is the make or break. And, and in particular, the last month and a half um, is, is really what's going to get you across the line. Uh, there's only sort of so long we can retain knowledge for. And then it gets to the Viva. So after this short answer question, I had a break for a couple of weeks, um, just took two weeks off. 
um, and did a few things that I sort of missed out on for the whole year. Um, I probably took a bit too long off in, in hindsight. Uh, I lost all motivation by the end of that period and was just very much overstudying. Um, the, the vibe of practice is, is the easy part. So you've just got to hassle people and, and try to get yourself 10 to 15 vibers per week um, and, and try and get them from consultants and, and people who pass well and, and be selective. If someone gives you a crappy you know, half-assed fiber, um, don't go back to them. At the same time, sometimes you don't have the choice and you've just got to take fibers from wherever you can get them. Um, the hard part for this was the content. So I found by about six weeks after the exam, most of it, it was just all fading away and I, I wasn't anywhere near what I, what I knew on the short answer question exam. Um, but it is really, really difficult to motivate yourself to go through content at this point. And I procrastinated so much in this period. Um, I think my, my phone screen time and YouTube time was just ridiculous. And I think that really made me feel quite crap about myself and, and, and quite down um, because not only are you not doing fun things that you should be doing, um, when you actually get to the end of the day, you're like, wow, I probably spent four hours procrastinating that I could have gone and done something else but you feel too guilty to do other things because you're sort of sitting there being like, I should be studying. So my advice would be to try and find a better balance if you can. Um, try and do discrete periods of content. It, it, it is hard and you've just got to find something that works for you to, to get through it. It's, it's really crawling to the finish line at this point. Um, I'd probably suggest taking the first month at least until you get the Viber invite off from revising content. So for those four weeks, you should just be practicing Vibers as much as you can, going over past Vibers, uh, you know, doing the diagrams. And then once you get the Viber invite, um, you can sit there and go, okay, brilliant. Now's, now I know I'm getting a Viber. Now I can do the crap part and go through the content. It only takes about three, four weeks to, to go through the content again, sort of 10 days. So if you allocate a couple of days a week for the last five weeks, you um, you go through all, all of it uh, and then it's and then it's fresh uh, for the Viber day. Uh, at that time, obviously still practicing Vibers. And really, if, you, if your hospital supports you to do it, try and do the Vibers during the day when you're at work. It is really awesome to come home at the end of the day, having done an hour of Vibers during the day and being like, I've actually done what I needed to. Um, for study uh, and the rest of it is just bonus. Um, advice for getting vibers. So I contact people on Friday or Saturday um, to organize vibers for Monday to Wednesday the next week. And then on Monday to organize vibers for Thursday, Friday on that week. Um, I left weekends free to study content and, and to, um, to do fun things. Um, there's definitely time in that viber period to let off a little bit and go back to that more balanced life, having a day off at least a week to, to go and do things and um, get your life back, get your headspace a bit better. Um, so sort of overall, um, big picture, I wouldn't aim for a price. Uh, I, I certainly didn't at any point until maybe the last few weeks before the exam. Um, if you do aim for a prize, just be prepared that you will be suffering the whole year. Um, it is a lot to cover. You'll get bogged down in the depth, you'll get stressed and, and, and it'll, it'll really you'll just end up drowning, I think. Um, overall, the depth of knowledge that you need to have to pass this exam is much, much less than you think. Um, and I think that if you end up aiming for the prize, you'll, you'll, you'll study far too much depth than what you need, even for the prize uh, or, and certainly to pass and you'll just end up you know, drowning in it all. Um, so really aim to cover the, the breadth of the content, the, the, the key material, the core material, and you wanna turn up to the exam and have the, sort of the mindset that no matter what they ask you, you can answer it. You may not be able to give them all the depths and details and all the specific receptors and all the you know, mechanisms of it absolutely everything but 
you can give them a, a broad overview. And if you can do that, you, you'll pass. Um, the, 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 way, the way I think I approach study and the way I would recommend approaching study is to try and cover all the content. And then how efficient you are at learning and, and sort of your, your innate ability to retain information is, is what's going to determine how much depth you retain and how much depth you'll, uh, you'll keep. Um, I think you have sort of less control over that. That's, you know, that's just going to be something that's been inherent and, and, and that you've reached this point with. Um, the thing that will really determine whether you pass is, is, is your work ethic and, and the strategy you take in, in approaching the content. Um, and you know, as long as you go through and, and, and cover it um, and, and cover the right information, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll pass well. There, I think a big problem for a lot of people and a big problem for, I think, oh, that explains a lot of the, part, the, the fail rate is that it is really difficult to find the right content. I think I spent at least a quarter, if not more of my time, sifting through resources and trying to find which one was best. And it just, it does your head in. So I hope that having my access to my OneNote will help with that. I think that's quite a targeted approach. There's some of it's waffle and some of it's really far in excess of what you need to know. Um, but that's sort of something I'm going to try and work on in the next year is uh, once I've had a break, obviously, it is, is to try and dumb it down a little bit so that there's just a much clearer path of the resources that you need to go through and the content you need to go through um, to, um, to, to simplify that and to make sure that people are covering the, you know, the right material and not going down the rabbit hole on, on stuff that's not even going to be assessed or relevant. Um, So sort of how, how I felt going through it all. Um, so when I got, by the time I got to three months, I was, you know, I, I thought I was totally effed. Um, I was like, there is so much to cover, so much to do, and, and absolutely no near enough time to get through uh, through it all. Uh, I was in a bad place. I was like, this is, this is hopeless. I had a good plan, but I was just like, I can't see how I'm going to get through this. Um, by the time it sort of got to one month, I was feeling a bit better, but I was, it was a bit of a roller coaster. I was, you know, going through periods of being like, the exam's a month out. There's no way I'm going to get there. There's no way I'm going to do this through being supremely confident that I would pass and do well and then back to square one again. But by about one week out, after I'd re revised, after I'd gone through all those flashcards, gone through all the content, I was sort of like, okay, I'm, um, in a very good place. I'm very happy with my knowledge. I may have a shot at this. Um, and then had a mini meltdown the night before the exam thinking, what if I choke on the day and just totally forget everything and have a mini, mini meltdown, um, which didn't happen, uh, fortunately. And I don't think it'll, it'll happen to you guys either. Once you sort of get to the exam day, it's a, you know, if you've done the, the run throughs, um, it very much just feels like another another day doing a run through. Uh, after the written, I was pretty happy. I was kind of feeling confident that I had a shot at the prize. Um, may have made a few jokes to my study group about it. When I walked out of the Viva, I was like, I've screwed it all up. I had two, what I would say, average Vivas um, that I just didn't deliver as well as I could have. Um, and I was really kicking myself because I knew the content. I just got muddled and then had to go back and sort of re-verbalize what I, the, the diarrhea that I just uh, regurgitated um, and then lost time doing that. It was a bit all over the place. Um, so after the vibe, I just got really drunk uh, with my study group um, being sort of a bit over dramatic, being like, oh, all that work for um, in the last couple of months for, uh, for nothing, not really nothing, but passing is is everything so that, that's the most important thing um and then i got a call a couple of days afterwards and i was i was pretty stoked uh, also a little bit bittersweet um so I, I feel like if i didn't uh, muck up those five as i might have done a little bit better um so I, you, you guys can all do this i think just by 
by virtue of the fact that you've managed to get yourself onto an anesthetic training place, which is so competitive and through medical school, you have the ability and, and capability to get through this exam. The exam itself on the day, the SAQs is not hard. That's a contentious statement. Um, you know, the actual questions that they ask, it's, it's not hard. It's not hard to come up with a good answer for them, provided that you know the content that they're asking about. The difficulty comes from if you've never seen that question before, and if you've never covered it, and if you just look at it and go, I don't know anything about this topic. And that's what makes this exam hard is that the breadth of content is the difficulty. If you've covered all of the breadth, you will pass. And if you haven't, you're running a very, very uh, precarious line, essentially hoping that what they ask on the day is stuff that you've covered. So the, the difficulty really just does come from how much volume of knowledge you, you, need, to, you need to grasp. Um, and, and really it's where do you focus your time and, and structure your time uh, so that you can cover the, the content in the best possible way and retain only the bits that you need to know without all of the extra stuff that you probably don't need to know. If you put in the work, you will most likely pass. The caveat is that there are people who work really, really hard, but get caught up in, in the details and get caught up in, 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 in stuff that's not really being examined. And if you haven't covered the right stuff, that's when people sort of turn up to the exam and get caught out. Um, again, hopefully the, the one note uh, is, is helpful for that. Now, before we go to the little bit for Tiva, um, does anyone have any questions? Hey, Luca, that's uh, amazingly honest and raw insight of your feelings, you know, in preparations for the exam. I, I must admit, I didn't know the extent of, you know, the roller coaster of emotions that you sort of felt leading up to the preparation. So I think it's incredible, incredibly insightful and brave of you to share all that with us today. And uh, I think it will resonate and help so many trainees out there who obviously feel a lot of these emotions, but um, I think don't have that, well, you know, don't don't have that ability to sort of discuss it. And and I think you know for yourself, like, did you feel like you had? Um, options in terms of discussing it discussing those feelings or, or how would you approach it differently or, or were you happy with the way that you approached it in preparation for that sitting in August um I, I, I had a I had a very supportive partner um and, and a supportive sort of network of friends that helped um I think it's hard because it's sort of you, you get to a point and it might be that the learning objective that you're trying to get done is just so broad and you just don't know where to start and you're trying to cover it and it just like causes you to have a mini, mini meltdown that day uh, and just be really stressed out. And there were definitely weeks where I was just super stressed and I just was not sleeping well at all. Um, but then just getting through that, um, honestly, for me, the thing that helped was just getting it done, uh, which is probably not helpful for most people, uh, which is why I would say I'm not the, the person to speak to about maintaining a good, a good, good balance um, and, and getting support. Uh, Cause the, the thing that really helped me was just to knuckle down and just and get it done um, without, um, and once it was done, I felt less stressed. I guess the last three months before the exam, um, your, your study group is gonna be the, the best group of people to talk to. And, and I think something that helped for me was when I checked in with people in my study group and they were like, yep, Absolutely, I had exactly the same experience this week. And I went through that meltdown. And a lot of the meltdown is, I'm gonna fail. This is all a huge waste of time. I don't wanna do this again. Um, and, and once you sort of speak to other people and you see that they're in the same boat, you sort of think to yourself, everyone's not gonna fail, right? You know, 60, 65% of people pass this exam. We're not all gonna fail. And if we're all going through this, it probably just means that we're all on the right track. Um, so just speak to the people that you're around in your study group and, uh, and, and use that. That was probably the most helpful part of, of having a study group was that level of support. 